A Beautiful Minds. I'm Orion, and guess what? It's not raining today, so I'm back out here doing what I love and where I love to be. So, survival of the wholesome. There's a saying, um, survival of the fittest, which is coined by Charles Darwin, and it refers to natural selection and evolution. Basically, you know, they produce the most successful, thriving species. This term is accurate, whether or not you believe in evolution or not, it is evident, but, you know, like, it's, it's widely misrepresented, it is, and, you know, fitness is more than athletics and intelligence, but the ability to adapt, that is what makes a species thrive, so, yeah, the most adaptable species, they find a niche and they own it, you know, that's, that's the cycle of life. Eventually, you know, the niches aren't successful forever, and they hopefully adapt. So, survival is essentially energy consumption. You know, energy gives life, and then life shares life. So, the original and most reliable energy source comes from the sun, and it's been around far longer than we have, or even Earth has. But, um... Oh, fish jumped. Anyways, thanks to the sun, it produced plant-based life forms, you know. Then, um, then the plants and or the universe knows this is essential for reproduction and sustainment of this beauty we call life. So, yeah. Plants have evolved to adapt to any soil under any weather condition, environmental, or whatever. And after the success in reproduction of plants, because they have their seeds to produce more plants, more complex life forms emerged, which is animal life form. These life forms recognize the abundance of renewable energy that is, you know, plants. And the energy is shared by the plants after the plant is consumed by the animal, which gives the animal capability to produce more plant consumers. This is not bad for the plant-based life forms, um, but an opportunity. Unlike plants, animals aren't rooted into the ground. They're mobile, you know. So um, this gives plants, an adaptive plants, an opportunity to spread their seed even more, whether it is passed through the digestive system or maybe they cling on to the outside of an animal that is just wandering in its natural environment. This made plants smarter, you know? They would produce fruits. These fruits carried the seeds, and fruits are uh, more desirable, you know? They could share the nutrients in a, in a more, more effective format while also protecting the entire plant from being entirely consumed so that it could produce more fruits and more seeds and more reproductivity. Then evolved the carnivore animal a misunderstood but essential creature to nature. As the herbivore thrived and the plant-based life forms would eventually be in jeopardy, you know, herbivores would repopulate too quickly and, and the fruit wasn't enough. They would feed on the entire plant, which made it hard for the plants to produce more fruit. And so these animals would be hungry. You know, what happened to all their food? They ate it all. So this, this is, this is where uh, tough times produce interesting turns in nature, because this is what produced the carnivore. The original carnivore was a herbivore, but due to its tough times, would have to feed on another herbivore, and they would feast on easier prey whether they are smaller, you know, slower, weaker, or deformed. This is also not bad, because it, it produces intelligent and athletic animals. The predator would have to outthink its prey, and the prey would have to become faster, swim faster, climb faster, or even fly faster. Life is not a war, but a playful game. And death is not losing, but it gives the chance for others to play. 
you know. Nothing goes to waste. Everything is recycled, reused, and learned from. It's all examples. That is where Darwinism eventually became misrepresented. Humans truly are the most adaptable mentally, physically, and spiritually. But we have lost sight of this game. You know, so... We've become ungrateful or cynical, you know. Like, it just happens, you know. And when our base needs are met, like reliable food, water, and shelter... Ooh, my battery's about to die. Let's finish this up. And this is, this is where uh, we develop new needs, family, love, and acceptance. And this is where we lose the big picture. They can't organize their needs, and this is how they recognize they're needy, but they go about it unhealthily. So, many don't have a purpose and exist rather than live. Many will say getting by rather than thriving. So, it's hard to thrive when we don't have a stable environment. People cling to the only things that are stable in their lives. We cling to uh, uh, the things we love, where we feel accepted. We cling to school, work, and, dist and uh, activities, hobbies. We cling to the people that also cling to the same things. This is natural. We need each other, so letting go is very hard. Some things we attach ourselves to aren't healthy. This, this is what we invest our time into, whether it's addiction, which causes mental health, and many other problems. Eventually our thoughts and ideas would evolve into manifestations, physical things, whether it be institutions, constructions, you know, places of recreation and practice. I hope this camera doesn't die, I'm like seven minutes in. And this is where, this is important for our well-being, but this is where corporation, bureaucracy, and agendas were also born. Uh, they are delusional because they do believe in the survival of the fittest, but they aren't the fittest. They're just parasites. They take responsibility and credit for the hard work of the many that did better for mankind. They don't want to better mankind. They want to better themselves. They separate themselves from us because they think that we are lesser beings, and they try to consume our energy. Just like an anglerfish in the deep, dark depths of the ocean, it produces a light, and it attracts other fish, and then it consumes that fish. And I'm not saying, you know, that anglerfish are just ugly monsters of the deep. That's just a metaphor and an example. So what can we do about our wholesome survival? Well, know our place in nature and the universe, you know? It's, uh, we gotta, we gotta learn, you know? And don't take too much and share what you can. If we all shared even a little bit, our base needs would be met, like food, shelter, and water. And then our even more advanced needs would be met, like love, acceptance, and purpose. So we can uh, develop more advanced needs that complement our, our whole society. And then share that too, like philosophy and art and knowledge. So, life is a wholesome, evolving game we can all get to play. Even the cynical corporations that are invested in their own survival, they will shrivel up and die of starvation if we stop feeding them. So, they're just obstacles that we learn from, and we get better as a society because of it. So here's a poem I wrote, it's a preview from my poem book, which I think complements this topic. Oranges are just orange lemons, don't correct me unless I'm wrong. The world is full of jealous demons, all hail oranges and that life live long. All right, wrap that up good. Camera's about to die. All right, love you guys, peace.